making this really cute poncho. Long in the back, short in the front, or you can also wear it to the side. Like that, or just up on one shoulder. Super versatile. Let's get started. To start making this striped V poncho, we are going to be using three colors, although you can decide what you want to do. Uh, so you can see the colors I used. I used one color for these vertical bars, and then a dark blue here, and this is a different kind of gray here, and then a blue. There's not much difference between the gray I used for the bars and the gray I used for my stripes. So I would not recommend doing that yourself. I'd pick different colors for that or just use the same color and not change color. Which I think is what I might be doing. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. So what we're going to do, we're going to start by making a chain. This is basically one big long rectangle. It's about, the chain is about two, not quite two meters, I guess it's about 160 centimeters for my average medium size or about 200 stitches but that of course depends on the hook you're using. I am going to be using a five and a half and I'm going to be making it out of these colors here. I'm going to use white for the bars, the lines going up and down and I'm going to be using the parchment and the soya for my lines going across. I hope that makes sense. So your, the color you're going to use the most is the, for these vertical bars. It's every other row. So whatever color you have the most of or whatever color you want it to be predominantly, you're going to be starting with. So let's get started. We will start... Oh, that was interesting by finding the inside of our ball of yarn. Hopefully we're lucky. Oh, not bad. Okay. And we're going to be making a chain. So my chain, I'm going to do about 200 stitches I think for mine and then I'll see how it goes. So I'm leaving enough of a tail so I can weave it in later. Make a slip knot however you're comfortable making a slip knot and put it on your hook and then you can start your chain. Um, your chain should be multiples of two so you can either count it out to go to, a, to 200 or you can just do it in multiples of two so one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and just keep going until it is long enough, which I is aim for about two meters. See how it goes. Um, the longer you make it, the, the longer you make your chain, the longer it will be on your body. So if you want it really long, then make a decent chain, like of about two meters. If you don't want it super long, like, you know, to your hands, you know, like if you don't want to hide inside it, you just want to short something, then you can do a shorter chain. It's totally up to you and there's no exact science to it, but multiples of two and about two meters long. And I'm not even going to count my chain in multiples of two because you can always fix that at the end just by undoing your slip knot. So I am just going to chain till it is two meters long and you can pause the video and make your chain and I'll meet you right back. I finished my chain. I didn't count how long it is but it is 64 inches long without being stretched which is about as long as my poncho that I already made. So let's start. So into the fourth chain from your hook make one double crochet. So that is going to count, your three chains is going to count as your double crochet and this fourth chain is going to be your chain one. So wrap your yarn and go into the 
fourth chain from your hook, grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two, and chain one. So that's a double crochet and a chain one. So wrap your yarn, skip a stitch into the third stitch. Can you see how I'm counting my stitches? So this one has a stitch in it. You can see my yarn is inside that one. This one doesn't have anything. I'm going to go into this, this third one here, or the second one, I suppose it is. So just poke your hook in, grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn, take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. That's a double crochet, and here's a chain one. So again, wrap your yarn, count two stitches back, so this stitch has our stitch into it, so we're ignoring that one. This is our, sec our next stitch, we're skipping it. And then into the second stitch here, we will make our double crochet. So bring your yarn back, wrap your yarn, take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two, and chain one. So wrap your yarn into the second stitch, grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two, that's your double crochet, and then your chain one. Let's just zoom in a bit. Okay, that's good, right? Better? Okay, so now we're going to do that all the way back along your chain till we get to the end. We're making like this ladder. Okay, so wrap your yarn, skip a stitch into the second stitch, make your double crochet, bring your yarn back, wrap your yarn, take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. Chain one. Wrap your yarn into the second stitch, grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. Chain one. Wrap your yarn and go into the second stitch, grab your yarn, bring it back, wrap your yarn, take off two, wrap your yarn, take off two, chain one. So keep doing this all the way back to the beginning of your chain and I will meet you there. So double crochet, chain one into every other stitch. So you're skipping a stitch and making a double crochet and a chain one all the way along. Skipping a stitch, double crochet, chain one, skipping a stitch, double crochet, chain one, all the way back. And you see we're getting this nice ladder. It's like a sideways ladder. So this is going to be the very bottom of our poncho, okay? So finish, get to the end, and I'll meet you back. I've gotten to the end of my chain. I've chained one. Skip a stitch going into this chain here. And then because I didn't count, I have one extra chain on the end. So that is not a big deal. I'm just going to undo, let me pull out this loop a little bit here. I'm just going to undo this slip knot. So just pick it apart, pick it open. Bring that tail through. So that, now, I've made my stitch into the last slip knot. So that's a good little cheat in case you don't want to count your chains. That works. You can undo it as much as you have as much as you need to to get to your to the right number. So that depends how much you like counting in the beginning. I don't, so I'd rather pick apart the slip knot, which it works out really good if you're kind of lazy like me. So now we're gonna change colors. So to do that, so cut your yarn, chain one, and pull your tail through and pull down to secure. Now to weave in this tail so you don't have to sew it in later, I'm just going to go into these back loops. So if you can see on my stitches, there's a front loop and the back loop. I'm going to go through the back loop. 
and just drag it through a few of these. Probably uh, because this isn't a solid stitch, we're not going into each stitch, I'm going to do quite a few of them. And you can kind of pull it down in the beginning to get that flat there. And then just poke your hook into each back loop and bring your yarn forward. You of course can sew it in with a needle if, if uh, that's easier for you. But I'm not into needles these days. So I just work in my tail as I go. And I take it quite far. We'll do one more. Like that. So it doesn't really change your work very much. It looks very similar to a regular. And it's secure because you've basically sewn it in that whole way. But now because we, you could technically leave it like this, but then if you stretch your work in the future, your tail might wiggle out and you might have to give it like a little trim, which I don't like. So I'm gonna just bring it back from the direction it's coming from, about two stitches. So when I'm doing in my stitch into here, then I'll pinch it forward and back and my tail won't wiggle out. It won't need a haircut in the future. So now I'll turn my work, like so, and pick our next color to start with. So I'm gonna start the next one, I think with this parchment. So again, find the center of your yarn. Or of course, if yours is ready to go, you don't have to do this part. Oh, that was lucky again. Okay. So I'm going to join my yarn into this uh, chain here, because I want it to look like you know, I want it to be from where my chain, where my yarn left off. So I'm going to poke my hook into that chain and leaving a bit of a tail, bring my yarn back and slip stitch with both loops to secure. Now I'm going to drop my tail and we're going to be doing single crochet with a chain one all the way back. So I'm going to chain one to get my height and I'm going to single crochet into this space right here. I'm going to drop my tail. I'm going to have to work that in later. So single crochet into this space, chain one, single crochet into the next space, chain one, and single crochet, it just means you're not wrapping your yarn first, so you're just putting, putting your hook in straight grabbing your yarn and bringing it back, wrapping your yarn and taking off two. So that's a single crochet and chain one to get to your next space. I'll hold this tail over and single crochet into the space and chain one, single crochet into the next space and chain one and keep going all the way back along your work single crochet, chain one, into the space. So this row is really quick and we can cut our tail now because we work that in and keep on going. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one. And you can tell if you've done your single crochet because if you look underneath your hook although this color is not the best for showing you, you can see there's one loop on the hook. If you haven't done your single crochet, if you haven't done your chain and you look underneath your hook, you will see two loops on your hook. Can you see those two loops? So that means you haven't done your chain. So chain and into the next space, single crochet. So keep going like this all the way back along your work and I will meet you at the end of this row. 
So here we are at the end. And this last space here counts as a space. So I did my chain one. So I'm going to do my single crochet into this last space. Now I'm going to chain one, cut my yarn, pull my hook and my yarn out, pull to secure that little knot, and I'm going to weave in this tail while I am here, like that. Pull it down so that little chain one knot gets flattened. And I'm going to work this back the same as I did before. Just because every row of this pattern, you're going to have uh, two tails, one on each end. So it works out to be a lot of sewing in your ends, although I did on my blue one. It didn't kill me, but it also was not the funnest thing to do. Funnest. <laughs> the most fun thing I've ever done. So weaving them in, I highly recommend. Just so when you're done your project, you don't have that, you know, a big chore ahead of you. You can just go straight to looking fabulous. I can get that in. There we go. All right. I'll go two more. I can go into that one. And into this one. And then two stitches back, I'm going to put my hook in from the back side and just pull my tail to the back. So now when I'm going over this, when I'm done, I can cut that one off. And I'm going to go back to this one on the other end that we did as well. And I am going to weave that one in too because I don't want to do any sewing unless I've forgotten to do this, which happens. But I'll try. Okay, so there's my, both my tails are woven in. This is the only one I'm going to have to stitch in when I'm done, hopefully. And this is where we're going to be starting. So now I'm going to go back to making my double crochets and chain ones. I'm going back to my white yarn. And I am going to join into this very first space, the very first um, chain space. Well, it's not a space, the very first chain stitch. So I put a loop on my hook and brought it through and do a slip stitch with both strands. Drop one strand, chain three, one, two, th three, and then chain one, because your chain three counts as your double crochet, chain one counts as your chain one. And now into these spaces, you're going to be doing a double crochet. So put your yarn straight into this chain one space of the, of the previous round and right on top of your previous double crochet. So your double crochets are stacking on top of each other and they're going to be in the same color yarn. So double crochet, chain one, wrap your yarn, use your fingers to find that space on top of the double crochet, that's your chain one space and make a double crochet, chain one, wrap your yarn. Next one, use your fingers to find the space. For these single crochets, the space is a lot smaller than the double crochets, so it can be a bit confusing. But your fingers will be able to feel it better than your eyes. And then work your way all the way back and you'll see how your double crochets line up straight on top of your previous double crochets. Chain one, wrap your yarn, push it in on top of that previous double crochet. Chain one, double crochet on top of the previous double crochet. Chain one, double crochet, oops, I got a loop of that one. 
double crochet on top of the previous double crochet chain one and work all your way back across your row like this and you can see where this is our third row we can cut this one off now this nice little tail see ya you can see we pretty much have two inches of our shawl done our, uh, you know not done because we're still getting across but you can see how quick that goes it's just our third row so this pattern is super quick so work your way across double crochet chain one and put your hook on top of that previous double crochet just remember that's where your stitches are going all this pattern all your stitches are into the spaces so that's also a lot quicker than finding the stitches and of course doing a chain one instead of a stitch it cuts down the number of stitches you have to do by half so super quick once you recognize the pattern and can just fly along at it so get to the end of this row and I will meet you for another color change now we are at the end of our row so I didn't do my chain one so into this last one here we make a double crochet chain one and now into this one here just into that area we're also doing our double crochet just so our edge is nice and neat on that side and all of our double crochets of the previous round including our chain have a double crochet on top so now we're going to chain one cut our yarn pull our hook and our loop up tug down to secure this tail we can cut off we are finished with that and this tail here we can weave in so I'm going to do that the same way and just work into that loops for say four or five of these pieces that's my goal and then I'll be secure I'm going to wash my machine Oops, and then put your hook to make sure and then put your back from that side and pull your tail back. So that once we go over that, we can cut that one as well. And then this one on that side, uh, I think that one I'm going to weave in with a needle later. So we will have some tails to weave in, but we can minimize it. My next row is going to be the single crochet chain one and I'm going to do this darker cream color, this soy. So now I'm going to turn my work, so I'm ready to go. And I'm going to put my hook into the top of this uh, double crochet, just in there. And put a loop of yarn on my hook, enough to sew in or weave in and bring it through. and chain one with both strands to secure. You can join your yarn any way that you're comfortable joining. That's just the way I've been doing it lately. So we're doing single crochet. So I've joined my yarn with a slip stitch. I'm doing a chain one. And then right into this space here, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna let go of my tail actually. I'm gonna do a single crochet. So no wrapping the yarn first. And a chain one and a single crochet and a chain one and a single crochet and a chain one and a single crochet and a chain one all the way back across your this row so it's the same as the other row we did the first row of parchment we've gone over our tail we can cut that one And thanks to Clara for my sweet little scissors. They're adorable and I love them, so thank you very much. Using them, obviously. So work your way back across this row and I will meet you at the end for another uh, color change. We'll go back to the white for a row of double crochet. I've gotten to the end. I've chained one. I'm gonna make my last single crochet into that chain four space. 
and I finished my row. So chain one to secure your work. Cut your yarn, pull your hook and your tail up and out. Just give it a little tug, make sure it's not bunched up. And two stitches back, put your hook in from the back, pull the tail down and through, and you're ready to join your next color. So turn your work. And I'll be using white. So I'm going to put my hook into that chain one's area as close to the edge as I can. Put a loop of yarn on my hook, pull it through, and slip stitch with both strands to secure. Now I'm going to chain one two and three. I chained four here and I think that's too many chains for me. I'm just going to chain three. So my slip stitch I'm kind of going to count that as a chain and then one two three. So I'm just going to do that. So I slip stitched and chain three. Now into this first space on top of your previous double crochet. So don't worry about looking for your stitches or where you should go just look for the top of your double crochets and push your hook straight into that space. So double crochet, chain one, push your hook on top of the next, just into the space, you don't have to go into the stitch, but just into that space, double crochet, chain one. Into the space on top of the next double crochet, double crochet, chain one and then do this all the way let me get that guy going this way so I can cut him after all the way back along your work so your rows are alternating between single crochet chain one in your colors generally and double crochet chain one in your base color which are the vertical stripes so your horizontal stripes are single crochet your vertical stripes are the very same color whatever color you're using, every double crochet row is going to be the same color. So make your poncho, probably get it about two feet, 24 inches or so. Um, I can measure mine just to give you an idea of how much crochet to do. Uh -huh. Let's see. Yeah, mine's about 27 inches or 70 centimeters uh, tall. So keep crocheting and I will meet you in part two for how we join this together. So I hope this gets you started. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. You can also find me, my details for, you know, my email and Instagram and all that is also in the description below. So if you have any questions or comments, just drop me a line and I'm totally happy to help you out. I hope this gets you started on your, uh, your poncho and we'll have part two coming up to how we join it and actually turn our rectangle into a poncho. So thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. Please share with your friends and thanks so much for watching. Stay hooked. Thank you.